Hey, thanks for catching our show. All right, Attorney Steve Vondran here. We are bringing you another exciting episode of Litigation Warrior. In today's video, we are going to be talking about setting the deposition, how to set the deposition, okay? So this, you may be wondering, why are you wearing the, the catcher's glove? I had a friend that I used to play baseball with. He asked me, he's in a litigation, and he said, you know, um, my attorney's not working out. I need to take a deposition or the fees are getting too high. I've got to take it over pro se. That means improper by myself. And so he's asking me, attorney Steve, how do we set that deposition? So without further ado, let's go and take a look at the attorney Steve litigation whiteboard. Okay, so here we are. So we're talking in this video. Let me get my pen here. So this is general legal information only and not legal advice. As you can see up here, we have the how to set depo. Now a deposition is really, to me, it's the most powerful um, discovery tool that you have. Now what happens is you get into a case, obviously your case is filed. Sometimes in federal court, you got to go through the scheduling orders and all that. But at some point, every case gets to discovery, whether it's a state case, a federal case, those kinds of things. And you have your traditional discovery tools. You have a request for productions. You can ask the other party to produce documents. Interrogatories. You sometimes in California and state courts, you have form interrogatories, pre-prepared interrogatories. You can use those. Admissions, requests for admissions. You're getting someone to admit or deny something. Um, you can send out subpoenas. These are some of your main tools. There's others. There's plenty of others, but these are your main tools. And the deposition, to me, is one of your best tools. Now, how do you set a deposition? Okay, let's take a look here. Again, this is general legal information only, not legal, legal advice. So if you need specific legal advice, you may want to seek counsel. But this is a general information to try to help you understand the process anyway. Okay, so obviously you're going to have a court reporter. You're going to need to get a good court reporter or somebody that takes down the testimony at the deposition. There's a bunch of them. You can find those out there. Look around, shop around, um, but they're easy to find. Find out what their costs and fees are. I have found a pretty wide range in costs and fees, and depositions can, can cost you some money. They're not, they're not cheap, especially if you want to do a video deposition, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, okay? But check out your costs and your fees, see what that's going to run you, Get a, have a good idea what you're going to be paying, okay? Now, here I have M and C. Uh, that's not macaroni and cheese, and I know it's probably making you hungry. It's meet and confer. Now, usually you have another attorney or an opposing party on the other side, and you want to set the depot. You say, I've done these steps, or sometimes lawyers will skip these steps. They'll say, let's go right to the depot. Let's go right to the depot. Um, but you may want to do these. I like to do a limited form of these just to get some basic background information. So I think that can be really important. But find out what your fees are. Now you're gonna do the meet and confer to try to actually come up with some dates that work. Now usually this involves emailing your opposing counsel or calling them or both, saying, hey, I wanna set the depot, you know, I wanna do it in the next two weeks. What dates are good for you? What dates work? What dates don't work? And you try to agree on a certain time. Now, if you can get that in writing, I have here, um, document your efforts, okay? So what, you, what you're really doing is just making sure you have a paper trail because sometimes um, you're with an opposing counsel that likes to play games and they may set a date and then they get closer and then they go, ah, sorry, we can't make it. And they start pulling this on you. You wanna have to be, you wanna be able to show your good faith efforts if you have to go in and get a motion to force them to a deposition, okay? So document your efforts. I like to put things in writing and then follow up with a phone call. That's my preferred way to do it. Um, and again, you, so you're getting dates, you're documenting that, you're securing a date. So by the time you get here, you got your court reporter done, you got your date, you've confirmed your date with your court reporter, everybody's on the same page, you know where it's gonna be, time and place, and you know if it's going to be a video deposition or not. So that's the uh, first set. Now, sometimes I have here set by code. What does that mean? Well, sometimes you have a heck of a time trying to set dates, and you work in good faith with opposing counsel to try to do this or the opposing party, and sometimes you're just they're just not cooperating. 
you're not able to get this deposition set. And so you do have a right to set it by code. And so sometimes I have to tell my other uh, my adversaries that, look, if you can't come up with some dates, if you if you keep canceling, we're just going to set it by the code. And then if you don't show up on that date, hey, you know, we'll just put it on the record and then we'll go seek, seek uh, discovery sanctions in court, okay? So set by the code, I'm going to give you just the California code here. Uh, my practice in California predominantly is where my practice is. Um, but CCP 225.270, typically is 10 days notice. So if you're gonna personally serve your notice, this is our notice we're gonna get here. If you personally serve that, all you need to give them is 10 days notice. 10 days notice, personal serve. If you're mailing it, it's gonna be 15 days, okay? If you're out of state, it's usually going to be to add some more days that you have to give notice, you know, an additional 10 days, for example. So I'm not gonna to go too much into that. Check the rules. These may change from time to time. So again, this is general information, but you want to set it by code. And if you're doing that, you're putting your, at some point you're getting here in the process, okay? We're getting here where we're setting the deposition notice. Now the deposition notice is a formal notice and I'm gonna put, uh, put a link in the bottom of this video to um, a basically an overview of the, deposi of the uh, deposition notice from SACLaw.org. I really like this website, it's very helpful, SACLaw. So if you're looking to see what it looks like, go into my messages into the link on this video and you'll see a little sample, okay? But now you got to get the notice, the formal notice. You put it in writing, the time, the place, time. Um, let's, let's talk about time. Um, it, typically in California, you would have seven hours to take a deposition of another party. So that's a pretty good amount of time. So if you think the deposition is going to go seven hours, five, six, seven hours, you're going to need to set this earlier, typically like nine o'clock or 10 o'clock. Okay. So you're going to need to set that earlier. If you think you're only going to be there for a couple hours, just some quick questions you have to ask, then you, you may want to set it at one o'clock in the afternoon so that you're just working off the rest of your day there. So time's important. The place, this could be the opposing party's um, law office. This could be at the court reporters, provide offices. Um, sometimes the court reporter offices are nice because they have food and sometimes they'll bring you food. Um, and what else? What else in the notice? You may want to have a demand for documents. You may say, I want you to bring these documents with you. And one, two, three, I want the contracts. I want the emails. I want this. I want that. And this is very important when you're setting the depot, get those documents in there that you want them to bring. Okay. So you can, you can not only go, you can go into a deposition, not only with your own documents, but documents that they're bringing. You can also ask them about their responses to these because these are under oath as well. So when you get to a deposition, you may want to ask them about the complaint. In fact, I'm just going to go right here. You may want to ask them about the complaint, the answer, the discovery, documents that you produce, documents that are yours, and just get their general sworn testimony under oath. Okay, you just, you're locking in. A, depo a deposition is designed to lock in their testimony so they can't go change it later at trial. If they do, you pull up the deposition and you, tr you try to impeach them. And you say, you know, judge, at the deposition, she said something totally different. And so you pull it up and it's all under oath. And then you ask them, were you lying then? Or are you lying now? So that's the classic trap, okay? So that's why you're doing these depositions. Um, I'm gonna, t so get your document demand in there, be thorough, have them bring the things you want to bring. If they're not bringing them all, when you start your deposition, you go through your list and ask them, did you bring this? Did you bring that? Why didn't you bring this? Where did you look? Did you do a, a reasonable investigation? Can you get these documents? We can, we can continue the deposition if you need to go get these documents, okay? Um, so there's more tactics and strategy to that, which I'm not going to go into. But I have here video, a video deposition. Now, this is something I learned many years ago, and I really like the video deposition. They can be expensive, but you hook up your opponent, the deponent, and they're, in, um, they're hooked up with gear, microphone. You got the camera staring at them. And this is a, this is a good time for you to test the credibility of the witness, 
What are they going to come? How are they going to come across? And if the case goes to a jury trial, you get to take a really good look at them. And if they're sweating and getting frustrated on those key questions, or they can't remember, at least you have the video that you can show the jury. And that can be really helpful. Um, because, you know, people, when they're just, when you're answering deposition questions without video and it's just recorded down on paper, you know, you can read a piece of paper and, and not really, you know, there's no substitute for being there. So with a video, you can actually, you can actually bring the deposition to the jury and let them see firsthand the first time they were asked these questions, how did they respond? So I love the video depo. If you can afford it, and you have some key questions and you think you can lock them down and get them nervous and squirming on something or get them upset about something that, you know, being overly defensive, that can be very helpful. Now, the video, if you're giving notice of a video, you have to put in there, we may be using, uh, we will, this will be a video deposition, you'll be hooked up, we will be using this for trial. There are certain requirements that I'm not going to go into right now, but if you're going that route, look up the requirements for doing a video depo deposition notice. It's going to cost you probably a couple grand, so a lot of people don't do it because of the cost, but for your key witness, especially if you have someone a little flaky or liable to get mad, I love the, I love the video depot, okay? Now, you can also do a written depot where you don't actually um, show up and go to court where you're just doing um, testimony under oath. I don't like them much, but there may be a time when that comes in handy. Um, but so at any rate, say now, so now you got the depot notice, everything's done, you requested documents, you know when and where, um, you're in good shape. Now you need to serve this on all parties, all parties that have been noticed on the case. So you've got to make sure everybody knows because all the other parties, you may have two or three defendants or whatever, they're all entitled to attend the deposition. So if they don't know about it, they can't attend it. So you need to give everybody notice. And that is a proof of service. You're serving it in all, on all these other parties like we're talking about and um, making sure that you have a good proof of service. Proof of service I'll talk about on another video. Um, finally, this is it. You get your depot day. They're under oath. They're sworn in. And you get to ask a lot of questions, anything that may likely lead to relevant, admissible information. You are able to ask those questions. The other side can object. And usually there's, it depends on who you're dealing with. Sometimes there's a lot of objections. Sometimes there's a few. If you want to get a better taste of it, I have another video, Attorney Steve, how to give a deposition. There's more information on there. You'll get a better flavor of what the actual deposition is like. Um, I will be coming up with a video shortly also of de common deposition objections. So you might want to subscribe to my channel if you love the law. This stuff fascinates you. You hate politics. You're getting tired of hearing about politics. Bookmark my page at attorneystevevideos.com. Just bookmark it, subscribe, make sure you got our got us coming here for future videos. All right, so th these are the questions you can ask. It can relate to any of these documents. It can relate to the complaint. It can re relate to these documents. It can relate to the documents that they brought. It can relate to a list of questions that you have. Um, and I'm going to go down here. Uh, right here, I say, be prepared. These are my main tips over here. Be prepared. And this is what I call the five P's, the five P's. I learned this in baseball. I learned this um, from one of my coaches. Proper planning prevents poor performance. Say it again. Proper planning prevents poor performance. So if you're getting all your questions, you're getting your documents lined up, okay, you're ready to go. You got a whole list of, of questions. Many times I'll go into a deposition, I'll have 10 pages just sitting there on my, on my uh, laptop, 10 pages of questions, okay? Have a notepad there, have sticky notes so that you make sure you're taking notes on things that are popping up that you wanna make sure you come back to. So have some sticky notes ready. And if you're bringing documents, you know, your documents and there's other parties, make sure you're bringing other copies for the other parties, okay? Because everybody's gonna need these documents, okay? So um, that's it, so be prepared. Um, I have down here, I'm not going to go too much into this, make a good record. This just means 
clarifying answers. Somebody may give you an answer that's not, and you're just kind of like, what? You didn't really answer my question. Let's be clear. We want to make a clean record, a nice clear record. So make sure you're getting those answers down to the specific questions. That's a little bit of an art form. It's one reason people hire lawyers. Okay. I have down here PMQ. That's person most qualified. Now, there may be times when you're in a lawsuit against a company and you want to take a deposition of one of the parties, maybe the IT guy you want, or the person that knows the most about you know, your software setups or whatever the case may be. So you would be asking for, I want to take the deposition of the person most qualified. It's another video I'm going to have to do. I've got all these videos. But this is where you can ask for categories of documents and categories of things that the expert would be not most knowledgeable about. So I'm not going to go into that, but it's a different um, deposition when you're doing it with uh, the PMQ, okay? Um, parties versus non-parties, my last checkbox here. So you can set up your depositions with parties like plaintiff versus defendant. I can take their deposition. They can take our deposition. You know, it's one deposition. It's a seven hours, but if they're not answering things or bringing documents in, or there may be a, a motion to compel needed because they're not, they're being evasive, then you can carry over the deposition, but I'm going to go over that in a, on another day. So, uh, but you have parties and sometimes you may want to take the deposition of a non-party. So usually with a non-party, um, you'll see in that document down below, saclaw.org, you'll see that it's different for parties and non-parties. Non-parties, you need to subpoena. You need to subpoena them to appear, and you need to subpoena them. Subpoena ducus tecum, as we call it. Subpoena ducus tecum. Who doesn't love that word? So, uh, But you're telling them they need to appear, and they need to bring documents, or you know, however you're going to set up your deposition. But um, you're going to send out the notice, so check that down in my saclaw.org. Org, my little link there, my helpful link. And don't forget, non, non parties to the lawsuit, parties that are not named in the lawsuit, are entitled to their witness fees 35 bucks a day in California, 20 cents a mile, to and from, all this good stuff. Check out the code. Again, these things can change over time, but you know, check out the code. But bear that in mind the difference between parties and non parties. And then finally, at the end of your deposition, you're going to get transcripts. The party that had their deposition taken has 30 days to make a change to the transcript, sign it, and say, these are my final answers, okay? So that's just a quick, dirty overview of how to set the deposition. Um, if you need more information, go to attorneysteve.com. That's our website. Or, like I said, Google Attorney Steve Depositions. We have another great video on how the nuts and bolts of a deposition work out. But I hope you like that. I hope that's helpful. This is how you set a deposition in discovery during the discovery process in a lawsuit. Okay, so Attorney Steve out. I appreciate you watching. If you like this video, don't be shy. Don't be afraid to punch that like button. Punch that like button. It helps us out and helps you out. Makes you a better person, I would say. So at any rate, have fun. Don't forget to subscribe. I got to run. I got lots of stuff to do. I hope this, this helps out to my... To my buddy out there, my base, my ex-baseball buddy, and I hope it helps you out, and I hope it works for you, but and all the rest of you out there that are watching our videos. So another exciting episode of Litigation Warrior. I'll see you again, folks. Take care.